Hello and thank you for joining me. Today I'll be talking about real estate scams. The reason being that within a few weeks, the National Youth Service Corps will probably start deploying, because I'm not certain of the date, but within a few weeks they'll probably start deploying youth corps members to their respective you know, areas of primary assignment. And Abuja, Lagos, Port Harcourt, and some of these other big cities tend to be in very high demand. That has been the case right from when I served some years back. Uh, this means that there's going to be a high influx of young, naive people into cities where they are likely going to be taken advantage of. Now, I cannot speak about what happens in places like Lagos and Port Harcourt and some of these other, you know, high demand locations, but I can definitely speak about Abuja. I have experienced it and I have people who are going through it right now. So this video is aimed at educating you, the new person coming to Abuja, particularly if you've never lived in a big city before, you might want to watch this video all the way to the end because I guarantee you, you will get some tips on how to stay out of trouble with regards to getting yourself accommodation. My name is Devan. Now, one rather obscure method through which you could get scammed, and many people are not aware of this. You see, Abuja has this problem where many people ended up building property on land that was not originally meant for such buildings. There's a whole issue with the FCDA, FCTA and so on and so forth. I will not go into that. But there's a lot of that problem in the FCT, particularly in the municipality, AMAC. Now what happens is, from time to time, you find that the authorities go around and mark these buildings that are meant to be demolished with a big red X. In many instances, the owners of these buildings refuse to comply with the directive to leave, I understand. You've put in some blood, sweat and tears into this. Sometimes it's not even your fault that you ended up building your house where it wasn't meant to be built because it was fraudulently allocated to you and so on and so forth. People refuse to leave. That's an investment. That's where their money is. But what happens is they transfer their pain and their problem onto someone else. Many people simply paint the X over and rent it out. That has happened to somebody very close to me. This was some years back. I think at the time she got scammed of about 250,000 naira which you will not even find a space for 250,000 naira right now in the municipality. But back then, it was quite a large sum of money. And it came as an unpleasant surprise to her that shortly after she moved into that space, and this was somebody who had been living in Abuja for a while. Shortly after she moved into that space, she was notified that she had to leave because the building was to be knocked down the following day. And that was exactly what happened. That property got demolished. This was barely a couple of weeks after she had paid rent. And God knows how many other people they had done that to before the building was actually taken down. So that is one. There's a possibility of renting premises that have been marked for demolition. That's number one. Number two, and this is the most common one, if you do not meet a proper real estate or property agent, somebody who has some kind of reputation to protect, because there's so many agents all over the place in Abuja. Many of them are people who, not to demean anybody, but quite a number of people who are looking for work and so on and so forth, trying to make ends meet, go into the real estate um, business in hopes of getting people to rent property for a commission. If you are unlucky enough to meet somebody who is fraudulent and you do not do your own due diligence, 
they can present false documentation to you, collect your payment and abscond. That is very, very common. So that is number two. Number three, you could get taken to a property that is actually not meant to be rented out. In this case, in some instances, this is just somebody who is very familiar with the people who live there. They will not, those who are living there might not even know that this person has this kind of scheme playing out. You know, they bring you to a place, they tell you, oh, don't worry about it, it's currently occupied, but this person has gotten transferred to Kano, he's definitely leaving in a week, and so on and so forth. You hand the money over. A week later, you come back, the person is still there, and he, has, he or she has absolutely no clue what you're talking about. And you start, eh, eh, but this person brought me here last week, we saw you, uh, yeah, I know him, but we're not close, he's not my friend, the property is not up for rent, and then you get confused. So that is strategy number three. Number four, they can take you to a place that is unoccupied, yeah, brand new, looks nice, or at least even if it's not brand new, it's empty, ready for somebody to move into. Now, what they will skillfully forget to tell you is that the property got taken this morning and there's a very good chance that by tomorrow evening latest, the house will be occupied. So between when the space was paid for and when the new tenant moves in, some of these sharp, when I say sharp, I don't mean it in a good way. Some of these fraudsters will bring you to such a space, pressure you, get money out of you, and then abscond. So the space is not even available. You come the next day and somebody has moved in. So that is number four. Number five, there's this other racket. Hmm? There's a group of them that go around, you know, because they insist that you pay something for them to take you around to see these places. Some people demand as much as 5,000 naira per outing. Sometimes it's 2,000 naira. I think it ranges between 2,000 and 5,000 naira. Some of them need that 5,000 naira desperately to get through that day. So they don't actually have anything to show you. What they will do is they will get you to cough up that 5,000 naira and keep taking you to places where nobody who is of sound mind would accept that kind of space to live in. And the, 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 that's, that's meant for transportation anyway, so it is non-refundable. So your entire day is wasted. They take you to about two or three properties that are in really poor condition. Some are actually not even meant to be rented out. You are frustrated, you are angry, the day is wasted, your 5,000 naira, gone. So these are the small, small pitfalls that await you. The biggest problem Abuja has is that of accommodation. Affordable accommodation. You will find that the city is filled with empty, brand new buildings. I've gotten to the point where I com I've concluded that it's possible that these buildings are just a form of money laundering because there are properties I've known that have sat there for 10, 15 years. No activity, nothing is going on, nobody has moved in, it's not sold, it's not up for rent, it's just sitting there. So there is no shortage of buildings, houses, and so on and so forth in Abuja. There's no shortage. The problem is most are not affordable. And another thing you should be mindful of, if you're hoping to live within the city center, that is within fed the federal capital city, that comprises Garki, uh, uh, Wuse, Wuse 2, Asokoro, and all of these places, Amak, the heart of Abuja itself. If you're hoping to live in Amak, and you want to have your own space, a decent living space of your own, you cannot come with less than 800,000 Naira. 
and that will probably be for a self-contained a self-contained by mm. nigerian parlance is what is known in other places as a studio apartment so you just have a room and then your kitchen and toilet facilities how you choose to manage that space is your business if you're lucky you could have the kind of space where you can throw a bed in one corner and a couch and maybe a small chair somewhere as a reading table in one in one corner but usually that is not the case with many of these studio apartments you can barely squeeze a bed in and that's it so those are the ones that you'll probably get for somewhere from 800,000 and above if you're planning to live in Amak. On the outskirts, I can't really say. And if you want to have a room and palo, well, that is in a decent part of town, you know, at least where you have all the amenities, water, light, good roads, and all of this, less traffic. You are looking at nothing less than 1 million naira. So this video is not intended only for the youngsters that will be coming to Abuja. It is also meant for parents. As you are hustling to, you know, make sure that you turn this key here, make that happen there, and so on and so forth, to ensure that your child is posted to Abuja, please prepare that child with some money because they're going to need it. If you don't have family, or very close friends for them to stay with for a while. So we've pointed out all the pitfalls that exist and you should be looking out for. So how do you navigate your way around this? First of all, I would say, if you are struggling so hard to come to Abuja, it should be that you have some kind of a support system here. So if you have people in Abuja, lean on them, ask for help, you are going to need it. We, every time I've made a mistake in my life, I've tried to warn others so that they don't fall into the same situation I did. I have experienced some of the things I'm talking about in this video. Okay? Rely on people who you know one-on-one, -on -one, family members, close friends. People you know should link you up with reliable, real estate agents. If you have somebody who has ever lived in Abuja or who has lived in Abuja for a certain period of time, they've had to rent space because you, you, you literally have to move perhaps every two or three years. Either the rent increases, usually based on rent increase. Otherwise, nobody really wants to uproot themselves after just two years and move. Sometimes it's also because of crime. So most people who have lived in Abuja for up to 10 years will be able to link you up with a good real estate agent, somebody they've used before, somebody who is reliable and who will not run off with your money. So link up with real people so that they can link you up with real estate agents they've used in the past that were reliable. So that's the most obvious way of navigating that. You see, as a youngster, you're experiencing freedom for the first time in your life, possibly. Uh, maybe you've led a very sheltered life, you've always lived with your parents, but because of NYSC, you now have the opportunity to leave home and experience being an adult for yourself and so on and so forth. Uh, so, of course, you want all the freedom in the world. But being far away from home also exposes you to certain things that you may not have considered, and one of them is danger. Consider living in a compound where the landlord also lives. First of all, you're certain of who you're paying the money to. Second of all, he lives there too. So there are certain benefits that will come your way that may not have been planned. I, for instance, had the privilege, I'll call it a privilege, of having stayed in a compound twice lived in compounds where the landlord was also domiciled on the premises and it made life so much easier for me. In fact, in one instance, when I stayed in Asokoro, it was a two-bedroom apartment. Back then, and it was quite expensive even then, it cost 750,000 naira. Beautiful place though, lovely, 
all the amenities. Uh, he would put on his generator for us whenever NEPA went off and so on and so forth. And after staying there for three years, he increased the rent to 800,000, I recall. And we were already struggling to pay 750. Do you know, we got together as a team, we sent somebody to plead with him on our behalf. Not only did he shave off the 50,000 he had added, he took an extra, that, he reduced the rent to 600,000. That has never happened for me before or since. He reduced the rent by a cool 150,000. If you increase, if you add the 50,000 he had wanted to increase, that makes it 200,000. So most landlords will relate with you in a very humane fashion, especially if you also respect their premises. Consider staying with a landlord. The two landlords I stayed with, I enjoyed completely. But that was also because I respected the premises. I came to the whole thing with a very mature mindset. Um, I'm not the kind of person who's giving to keeping very late nights, having crowds of friends, uh, having parties, all of this, trashing the place, making very loud noise with my music and so on and so forth. If you can just contain yourself, you'll enjoy living in a premises where the landlord is also domiciled. So consider that for your safety, not just personal security, but also to be certain of where your money has gone. Then another thing you can consider also is getting a sublet. Now, a sublet is not always necessary. It's not always necessarily the landlord. What is a sublet? A sublet is taking a room in a house that's already occupied. So sometimes, let's say somebody has rented a premises for, say, maybe 3.5 million. Sometimes some people fall on hard times and, the, you know, they couldn't get a reduction on the amount that they were asked to pay for rent. Some, there are people who will rent out sometimes even the master bedroom if you're willing to part with 1.5. And they will arrange it in such a fashion that it will be almost as if you don't live with other people because the only thing that might you know, bring both of you together might be greetings. They find a way to create your own special entrance or exit so that you don't have to... But I've seen people take sublets and it worked for them because people respect the fact that this person has paid for that space and they have a right to live as they choose to live. As long as you're not a very disruptive person, as long as you're ordinarily a level-headed person, you'll be able to survive a sublet. And you can actually, could actually even develop a kind of camaraderie with the people you're living in the same house with, such that you have a good relationship that goes beyond, eh, I came back from work and I've gone to my room. You could actually find yourself making lifelong friendships as a result of such arrangements. Now, last and the least popular, and the one I really don't want to recommend, but sometimes you, you just have to bite the bullet when it comes to some things. Squatting. Squatting is throwing yourself at the mercy of somebody who already has a space and essentially pleading with them to let you stay for a while. It was a very mixed grill kind of experience for me with squatting, but sometimes you're stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea. You need to do what you need to do to survive. Um, squatting throws up it it, it, it it wakes you up. It wakes you up real quick. You come to realize that uh, people aren't always what they seem. The person you think is going to give you a hard time turns out to be laid back. That auntie, auntie, auntie that is so, turns out to be hard, cold, unwelcoming, and low-key cruel. But if that is what you need to go through to harden you, to be able to face the realities of life. If you don't have the money, that's what you need to do. You humble yourself, you stay, you abide by the person's rules. 
so that you can at least have a roof over your head. Because there are, particularly young girls get into situations where they find themselves moving in with a man that uh, they ordinarily might not even date because of accommodation challenges. And this is something that many, many, many people, families and so on do not consider when they start pulling strings to make sure that their, their ward is posted to Abuja. Another thing you should consider is the very real possibility that your child could get posted out of Amak and the rest of Abuja is a village, essentially. I'm not even kidding. There are proper raw villages with very, very bad roads in the Federal Capital Territory. Yeah? So these are things you, you could get posted to one village. It's a reality. So as you're trying to work your posting to Abuja, make sure that whoever is pulling the strings finds a way to keep you inside Amak. You'll pay more for rent, but if you don't like the rural thing and you're working your posting, and it's something you need to be careful of, all of the FCT does not look like Amak. So, happy hunting. Thank you for watching. Continue to like, share, comment, and subscribe if this content was of any value to you. Thank you.